Hello everybody, my name is Francesco Pellegrini. I am a product owner for Radio Network Optimization at Swisscom, and today with my colleague Ivan, uh, we are going to show you how in Swisscom we are changing the way to optimize a mobile radio network with the usage of analytics and AI, of course. But let's start talking a little bit about a mobile radio network um, and its complexity. So first of all, um, a mobile radio network is something very complex, and its complexity is uh, grows uh, continuously over the time. There are several reasons behind this complexity, but today I would like to highlight uh, only three of them that are more connected with the radio network optimization. So first of all, the infrastructure. So a mobile radio network has a very complex infrastructure. It's made up of uh, Multiple, multitude of components that has to be worked together. Uh, second, a mobile radio network um, deliver to our customer different kind of services. And last but not least, uh, the huge amount of data that are generated by a mobile radio network every day. Um, but let's start and let's go deeper a little bit more in the, about the, the infrastructure. So uh, a mobile radio network consists of tens of thousands of network elements that we call cell, mobile cell. In Swisscom, we have more than 100,000 cells active in the network. Uh, a cell can, be, can belong to different technology. For example, we have 4G cell, we have 5G cell now, but we still have 3, 3G cell in the network active. Um, a cell can belong to different frequency layer. So uh, we are talking about a layered network, and in Swisscom we have up to eight uh, layer in frequencies. Um, a cell can have different kind of antenna type. So in the past, we have the standard passive antenna, but with the 5G, we introduced the active antenna. And finally, a cell can be also have different installation type. For example, we are indoor cell and outdoor cell. Each network element, each cell, has hundreds of configuration parameters, and each cell interacts with the neighbor ones, generating hundreds of thousand relations. And each relation has another parameter to be configured. And on top of that, of course, the user, the user of a mobile network are constantly on the move, generating mobility patterns that change over the time. A second uh, complexity dimension uh, is about services. Nowadays, a mobile network, network uh, uh, is used by uh, the final user to access to different kind of services, like, for example, social media, gaming, web, video, and, of course, voice call. And each of these services has different technical requirements in terms of latency, in terms of throughput, uplink and downlink, in terms of reliability. And of course, it's a mobile network. So our customer want to access to the mobile network anywhere, anytime, and of course on the move. Then the third uh, uh, dimension of complexity is, is about big data. That is the, the closest to the today topics. So in, in our network, in a Swisscom network, we monitor our customer experience every day, generating a huge amount of data that can be used to operate and to optimize the network. We are able to detect in near real time when and which kind of services our customer uh, have degradation in their mobile, mobile experience. We, also, we are also able to detect pattern both in time and in space, correlating every issue now with a specific area in the network or in a specific node in the network. So it's clear that is a huge uh, flow of data that uh, needs to be managed, uh, supporting and helping the engineer in the radio network optimization. But what do we exactly mean with the na radio network optimization? So radio network optimization is a continuous and data driving process uh, for adjusting all the parameter that we have in, in a mobile, uh, mobile radio network. And as we have seen before, there we are hundreds of thousands of parameters. Adjusting this parameter to deliver to our customer the best customer experience 
adapting the network with the evolution of the traffic, the mobility of the user that they change every day, with the new service that are uh, introducing the network every year, every month, and of course, with the growth of the network itself. Some years ago, we, we had only 3G, then we start to, to, uh, to, 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 to have the 4G, now we have 5G. Uh, so the technology evolved and we need to manage this. And this task, um, in this task, uh, automation, analytics, and EA, for sure, is, uh, are the key to manage this complexity and to improve with the customer experience and bring in the radio network optimization process one step forward. But now I hand over to Ivan to see some concrete examples. So now it's theory and let's see some. Nice Indeed. So now that more or less context challenges are clear, we would like to show to you three concrete use cases. But before going into the details of each one, maybe it's good to take one step forward and see so in sort of the um, broad data-driven range where we stand, also for transparency's sake. From the left, something that we have already trialed, it's in production, rolled out in the whole network. To the right, something that we will do in the next innovation sprint. So we have the, the, the three different use cases you can see here, how they are placed. So the first one, um, starting point is um, mobile network expert has a predefined logic and then we use data science, big data pipelines to fine tune the parameters and to automate it at scale. Second use case is we use data science, big data analytics to generate new data or that was not previously known or in this format to the experts and the experts take that to actually um, come up with new logic. So sort of we call this some sort of augmented data. Third use case, a little more forward looking is we have some the machine learning already working from the beginning, trying to derive some logic or at least cluster use cases. And then the role of the expert in this use case would be to validate what we are getting out of the, of, of the machine learning. So now maybe let's go with the first one. When we say um, automation at scale, and in particularly in mobile network optimization, what do we mean? The concept that's usually um, use is about closed loop automations and is this schema here. We start with the data sources in the order of terabytes and then we aggregate usually since it's optimization per week, bi-weekly, monthly tends to be enough. This aggregation is usually shared by family of use cases. This gets down to gigabytes with useful information. Then we have usually per pipeline one analytics um, per use case that goes from the gigabytes to already megabytes, already in table format, maybe maps. That's already enough from an expert to get uh, to be able to see what's going on and to derive some actions. But we try to close the loop completely. So we have also the actions. We try to tie these results with some specific actions, which at the end are something like um, cell ID, parameter to be changed, value. Then this is applied at scale, hundreds, thousands per round. And then the nice thing is that this feeds back to the data. And when we start again, we don't only do this forward, but because we know which ones we changed in the past, we can actually check whether the changes we intended to make were actually happen as we wanted. And we can also apply uh, backward looking actions like rollbacks, etc. So this becomes sort of a dynamic system. An example of one such use case that we already have in production on uh, network-wise. Here you have two charts in the two, painted the triangles in orange are 5G cells, the triangles in blue are, or here it's an omnidirectional cell in, uh, on the right, these are the 4G cells. When you today are connected to the 5G network with uh, Swisscom, you're actually connected at the same time with a 4G and a 5G cell. And so you get these pairs of relations and here it is shown, without going into the details, by tile, 200 by 200 meters, green, good performance, red, not good performance, gray, we don't have enough inf information. So you see the one on, on, on the left is looking good, mainly green, the one on the right is looking not so good, only red. And then we attach an action, for example, for this particular pair of cells, we don't allow them to work together. You can see that we have more than one million 4G, 5G 
relations, so this is not something that experts can do by hand. And that's why we apply the automation here. Second use case, what we call augmented data. You have here similar charts, and we start with the one on the left, in which you can see a given cell, in this case is a 5G cell, whatever it's pointing, and some red dots in which it's not working so well. We provide this to the experts already pre try it with some information on which cells could be problematic. Then they take this, they make some adjustments, and then we provide the post. And we have the pre and the post to see what was the impact of the changes made. And if I can quickly demo this, now I, will I be able to show my cursor? No. There. There. So ju just to show that this is not just a static chart, right? So you get here, y you know, information, all the information that they need. When you click, you see which other cells are covering those. You can then do this on, on the two sides. You also get information on the actual cell you're tuning, the, the parameters, the, the everything. So it is really, you know, a richness of information what we are providing to the tuners so that they can see things that otherwise they wouldn't be able to see. This, the point that we are, we have been trialing this live network, but still a handful of cells. It's still not, let's say, good enough to do uh, an overall automation. We are working on this. This is our project right now. The third use case. You've seen in the chart before, we were already pre-showing some circular patterns. What we have tried also is to do some sort of lateral pattern so that we can already highlight some sort of common issue they may have, you know, they are not covering maybe a given, a given lateral on the azimuth on a given side or from a given circle, they are not working well. And of course, these are but two patterns we can think of, but nothing prevents us from running a supervised machine learning algorithm in there and see what other patterns we can come up with. And of course, we can get crazy patterns out of this and what we need afterwards is the expert input to say what makes sense and what not. And in this case, makes sense means, is this a pattern that can be attached an action that makes sense because it solves a given root cause that the cells having this pattern would share. And so this would be the idea. And we have a set, these two we tried, and then the next step, we will want to try the next innovation spring. Beyond data science and machine learning, maybe some uh, Important points, first, expert input and engagement is, is very important. We are not yet at the stage in which you can pull out a machine learning algorithm, AI, LLM, whatever you call it, and work it on its own. You, you still need, you, you saw in the three different use cases, in different positions and roles, but we need the expert input. Second important takeaway is processes are important. You may have a very nice thing, but if it doesn't fit into a working process from the optimization guys, then it doesn't work. And you cannot always do that at the very end. For example, the way they usually organize themselves is you see a degradation in a KPI, you attach this to a given root cause, and then you apply an action to mitigate this. If what you're doing only provides, sees from, goes from KPI degradation to action, without root cause attached, probably they won't use it. So, you know, these sort of things you need to know in advance in order uh, to make it production. And the last point, this is, yeah, innovation. So you almost never get it right first, not even second. So from the third, maybe. And so you have to count in also P POs, PMs, etc. that, yeah, this requires time. Otherwise, it wouldn't be innovation. And with that, I think we came to the end. <laughs>